Imagine being a Zelda fan in the early 90s and going from this to this. Legendary Nintendo composer Koji Kondo seems to be trading typically bombastic Zelda music for something we might hear in a dream. It's more than just a lullaby, though, as the piece actually foreshadows the adventure that the player is about to embark on. Recently, I have embarked upon my own quest to transcribe every single song from the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time soundtrack and compose my own music in the style of each song. I'm also taking one unique compositional technique, arrangement method, or instrumental idea from each song and making a video analyzing why it helps make the song great. Naturally, I'm starting with the first song you hear when you boot up the game, the title screen. Let's take a look under the hood at some of the things that make this song the moody, solemn masterpiece that it is. Starting with diatonic major seven chords. Buckle your seatbelts, because I'm going to focus on this for a while. Here we go. The entire A section oscillates back and forth between F major 7 add 6 to C major 7 add 9 in a series of plagal cadences. A plagal cadence is one in which the tonic chord is preceded by the subdominant chord, or 4 to 1. In this case, F major, the 4 chord, to C major, the 1 chord. Here's how the plagal cadence works. C major is the most stable chord in the key because it contains the root, C, the major third, E, and the fifth, G, which sound the most stable to our ears in this particular key. This has to do with how the sound wave frequencies interact with each other. F major introduces a little bit of tension, but not much. That's because it includes the fourth, which is technically one of the unstable tones in the key. Unstable tones are always sort of gravitationally pulled towards stable tonic tones. Since the four is just a tiny little half step away from the third, it's always sort of pulling to resolve in that direction. The F major also includes the sixth, A, and the root itself, C. We've already covered how the root is the most stable note in the key, so that helps to give the F major chord some stability. The sixth, or what most music theorists call the submediant is sort of like the middle ground between the four tone and the one tone. It's more stable than the four, but definitely not as stable as the one. Remember, the whole idea of gravity that I talked about, well, that still applies to the sixth. The orbital pull, so to speak, is just not as strong. As you can see, the leap from six to five, which as we mentioned, five is a stable tone, is twice as big as the leap from four to three. The pull to resolve isn't as strong, and so it's not as unstable as four. Does that make sense? You might be wondering why in the world I'm talking about C major and F major when the chords in this song aren't even those. They're F major 7 add 6 and C major 7 add 9. My point in first demonstrating how the plagal cadence works is to now demonstrate how when you add the seventh degree of the scale, that whole thing about stability, instability, kind of gets turned on its head. That's basically what Koji Kondo is doing here. That's the point. He's trading the stability of a plagal cadence relationship for the ambiguity and dreamlike instability that major seven chords introduce. The only time major seven chords occur diatonically or naturally without any sort of rule breaking are on the first and fourth degrees, C major seven and F major seven, which just happen to be the only two chords of the A section of the Ocarina of Time title theme. I consider the add six in the add nine in these chords color tones and functionally inessential. That's why I omitted them in this explanation. It's amazing how adding one little pesky seventh tone completely changes the way these chords work and feel. You could think of the major seven as sort of taking away stability from the C major and adding stability to the F major, making their stability levels almost equal. 
I'm sure this is an oversimplification, so take my theory with a grain of salt, but you can kind of think of chord degrees as having a point system of stability. If having the most points means having the most stability, you might think of the tonic note, C in this case, as having 10 points, the fifth as having eight points, and the third as having six points. Subsequently, the less stable but still sort of stable tone of the six would have four points, and the four and two would have two points. The seven, the leading tone, the most unstable one of the bunch, would have one point. So here's our C major chord. It's obviously very stable, earning 24 points. If we add that seventh degree, we get 25 points. If we enter in our F major chord, it's less stable than the C major, earning 18 points. However, when we add the seventh degree, which just happens to be the third of the key, E, we gain six points, giving us a total of 24 points. So it's not a terribly irrational argument to say that the F major seven has a very similar level of stability to the C major seven, in this context at least. So while the F major to C major feels like a complete cadence, the F major seven add six to C major seven add nine sort of feels like a wandering, floating dream that doesn't quite know where it wants to land. Both chords have elements of instability and stability. They simultaneously want to go somewhere and paradoxically seem content staying where they are. Now there are other elements that make this piece sound like a dream. The slow tempo, for example, and the emotional performance. The intro is replete with fermatas, or long pauses, that make it feel contemplative and not really falling into any real rhythmic pattern. The melody also favors upper extensions over chord tones. This gives the song an ethereal, floaty vibe that, again, makes the whole thing feel like a dream. Listen to the contour of this melody and check out the amount of extended tones, which I've labeled as blue, versus chord tones, which I've labeled as red. I may have convinced you that this theme is trying to make us feel like we're in a dream, but an adventure? That's kind of a stretch, right? Like all good composers, Koji Kondo is notorious for breaking the rules of music by taking chords that normally belong in other keys and injecting them into the main key. The B section subtly lifts the intensity by going back and forth from the F major 7 now to the G, with the melody singing chord tones. But the epic final measure lifts the progression in a dramatic yet subtle rise to A flat major, then to B flat major, resolving cleanly right on our tonic of C. No, actually, wait, it doesn't do that at all. We're gonna see this triumphant flat six, flat seven, one progression all over the Ocarina of Time soundtrack. It's a staple of Koji Kondo's compositions ever since he debuted it as the Super Mario Bros. level complete theme. But here, this flat six, flat seven progression actually subverts our expectations with a deceptive cadence leading back to the four chord at the beginning of the piece. It's a subtle, tasteful way to foreshadow our forthcoming adventure. I didn't even make this connection initially, but the idea of the intro being a dream makes way more sense when you consider the fact that the game starts with Link having a nightmare. Huh. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this analysis and found it somewhat helpful and or useful. Like I mentioned before, my goal is to analyze and compose in the style of every track in the Ocarina of Time soundtrack. I'm using the track listing from the official Japanese release as my guide, as some of the songs on the US soundtrack were omitted for some reason. I'm not sure if I can sustain this level of analysis, but I'm gonna try. You can help me out by letting me know in the comments below if this was too in-depth, not in-depth enough, totally sacrilegious, uh, or something in between. What you're listening to is an original composition that I wrote in the style of this song. You can find the link to that song in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button so you can be alerted when I post my video on the next song 
enter Ganondorf. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you.